Hi everybody, I'm gonna show you how to sharpen your knives with the Torma T1 knife sharpener. Now there are a lot of sharpeners on the market. There's manual sharpeners and there's power sharpeners. This is a power sharpener. It is small, it's compact, it's not that heavy, but its features are mighty. Tormic T1 is designed and made in Sweden. Absolutely high-end quality, beautiful handle of wood. We've got a nice hard case, no plastic. We've got a 600 diamond wheel on here, 600 grit, and we have a power honing wheel. The honing wheel has itself built into it the compound, so you don't need to worry about charging up your compound or putting on the green stick or the white stick or any type of various diamond compounds you want. There are other levels of sharpeners that Tormix sells, which you would put that on, but this one has everything impregnated right into it, which makes it very convenient and very fast to do your sharpening. Now the T1 has some moving parts, only a few. It has the guide. When you take it off, this may fall out, so make sure you pay attention. This is the angle indicator. And you also have this black piece on here, which comes off and holds a magnet. And the thing that's genius about this design is that the magnet, as you can see, holds all the particles onto the magnet. So you don't get residue all over your counter when you're sharpening, and you don't get a bunch of stuff coming up in your face. And anything that comes off of it sticks onto this little disc, which is magnetic. You can basically pop this off, wash it off, put it back on, and then you will have the uh, sharpener ready to go, nice and clean. This indicator on the side here, as you can see, moves the angle indicator. So all you do is you make sure that's in here. And the reason you would take this off is because you can actually remove this and sharpen larger knives that aren't gonna fit inside of this slot. So I do have a video on sharpening cleavers. Make sure you see that right up here. Now, the Tormac T1 does some a few things. It will give you the precise angle up to 20 degrees because this is designed for kitchen knives. There's not any kitchen knives you're gonna use it over 20 degrees. You go over 20 degrees, you're starting to get into some everyday carry knives. Cooking world, you're talking 20 degrees or less. A lot of people now are doing 15 degrees, some are doing 17. I have Japanese knives that are down to 12. So this will uh, carry you through all the ranges you need to sharpen your knives. Now this video is gonna be comprehensive. I'm gonna show you how to actually test your knife to make sure it's at the proper angle because if you have a knife and you're not sure what angle it's at, it's very important to find that angle. We're gonna cover that in this video and I'm gonna show you a knife that I'm gonna dull up in an incredibly horrible way and we're gonna go ahead and sharpen it on the team one and get it back to razor sharpness. Now knives come from the factory about 300 to 350 grams on the best scale when you do a measurement and that is considered factory sharpness. The best testers come with a guide such as this that show you the various degrees of sharpening. These are two different guides. And on here you can see that all the way up at the top, we've got 2000, which is a common butter knife. And it goes all the way down to zero. I've never seen a zero, I don't think you ever will. I have done many knives at 50. And anywhere between 50 to 75 is a double razor edge. Double razor edge, 50 to 75 on the best scale. The best scale that I use is uh, Sharp Electronic PT50A. It is the standard de facto in knife sharpening tests. You'll see a lot of people using it. You'll also see a lot of people using it incorrectly. And we're gonna talk about that as well. If you do get one of these sharpeners, you should learn how to use it because what you see a lot of times out there on YouTube and on Instagram is not correct. So you can actually cheat this and show a knife that's much sharper than it actually is by slamming it down, slicing across the media, and there is a proper way to do it, which is a very slow, continuous pressure until the test media breaks, which is between this device here that holds the media. There's a very fine filament in here, almost like a real thick hair, and that filament is special filament designed for testing, and if you don't use that filament, you're not gonna get the proper results. Now, the Torma T1 knife sharpener is designed for kitchens. There are hand sharpeners out there, they're manual, they do take a lot more skill, and that's the nice thing about this is that there's very little skill needed to use a sharpener. As long as you put the blade in, the holder correctly, the angle guide, and you make a nice even stroke back and forth, you just really can't screw it up. Then you have the honing wheel, which takes a little bit more practice, but it's not difficult. You wanna make sure that that honing wheel is always spinning away from the sharp edge of the blade. Some people have made the mistake and put their knife down with the rotation going towards the blade, and you'll screw up this wheel, so you don't wanna do that. Now today we're gonna to take a knife. This is one of my knives that I can destroy and restore. It is a knife that I've done multiple times. You'll see other videos where I use these knives, or I have the smaller 
paring knife to show how to do a small knife. This does small knives very well and of course does the big knives with no problem. Now, what I do is when I sharpen my knives, I usually mark the best score tester when I'm done sharpening them so I know where they're at. So this knife is at 126 on the best tester. Now to get an accurate test, you're supposed to use this three times in a row. You average them out and that gives you the number for the sharpness. For what I'm gonna do today, it really isn't necessary. They're all gonna be really close. And I make sure that the knife is sharpened completely on all the sides and from tip to the heel. And I'll get the same results pretty much up and down the entire knife. Now, the one thing that you should do with the T1 is make sure you have a good leather strop. This does sharpen it incredibly well. But to take it to the final piece, you definitely wanna get a nice piece of leather so you can strop your knife afterwards. I wanna show you that as well. So without further ado, let's get into the sharpening test. Now this knife at 126, there's no need to test it because I know it's sharp. And 126 will cut through this paper. And I'm gonna tell you about this paper test. Even though the test on this looks sharp, there's rough edges on here that I haven't ground off. Technically not as sharp as this knife on the best score tester at about a 140, but watch this. See how smooth that is? The paper test can be very misleading. The one thing that you really need the paper test for, and a lot of people don't talk about the real purpose of running your knife through the paper, isn't necessarily to see that it's sharp because a lot of knives will do that. It's to see if the knife is actually sharpened properly and that edge is perfectly polished and perfectly smooth. If you take your knife and you run it through the paper very slowly, which you should be doing, if you see people doing this, it's sharp and people, wow, that's incredible. Well, I wanna see them take the knife and just run it through very little pressure into the paper and take it down and stroke that all the way across the paper. What that does, it lets you feel if there's any type of burrs or any type of issues with the edge of this knife. So I'm not saying that this doesn't say it's sharp. I'm just saying that the real purpose of a paper test is to test this knife to see if it's actually been sharpened correctly and it's smooth and sharp all the way down that edge. Because you could easily do this and just cut with that backside or you can do the front side, but I wanna feel this knife all the way down from heel to the tip and see if there's any roughness. Now this one's perfectly smooth. This one is not because I damaged this knife horribly. I got it pretty sharp in some areas, but it needs a lot of work. And so we're gonna show you that today and get this knife sharp again so we can do the same thing with this knife that you saw with my Victory boning knife. Now, the one thing I do is I take this and this is something that I don't mind doing with this knife because it doesn't cost a lot of money, but I will never do that with my other knives. We're gonna take this and we're gonna just really dull this thing up bad. Let's have some fun. This knife is essentially thrashed. We're gonna go ahead and test it on the best tester and see what we have for our score. I can really tell you by just looking at the edge of this knife, I'm getting not an even reflection uh, across here. If you see light on the bottom here, that means you've actually flattened off that edge, which I can actually see in several areas. This knife is really damaged. So we're gonna go ahead and put this on the tester and we're gonna go ahead and run the test. And when you run the test, you need to make sure you take this knife and you are gonna basically place it in the fulcrum on here and you're gonna slowly apply pressure on the test media till it breaks. You don't wanna slam it down. You don't wanna run it across. You wanna put it in properly in the fulcrum and actually do a nice, slow, easy pressure until it breaks. Now on this one right here, we can do a couple things. We can put it in the tip because obviously if you wanna test the same spot all the time, it gets a little tough. If you put the tip up here against your finger, then at least you have this area of the blade you can test for sharpness. If you wanna do the other end, you're gonna to have to slide this down and I usually align a logo or something on the knife across the test media and that way I know I'm in the right area. So we test a couple areas. In this case, I'm gonna just test one to get started. I'm gonna put this and align this so the logo is just to the right of the media and we're gonna go ahead and press down slowly and I'll show you the test results here. Tearing it out, making it to zero grams. And we're gonna go ahead and press it down. It's bad. Oh, 897, 897, 897. If we look at our best tester score chart, 897, uh, we'll just call it 900, is the bottom end of severely rolled edge. Severely rolled edge. 
So 900 is absolutely horrible. It's not gonna cut anything. Matter of fact, it probably will cut you in the kitchen if you're cooking. It's very dangerous at this point. We wanna see how we can get this down. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna turn on our T1. And if you can hear it, great. If you can't, it's really quiet. And it's just no vibration, really smooth. And now what we're gonna do is I have this set to 20 degrees. But the question is, is this a 20 degree knife? And you're not really sure. So how you do it is you'll see the magic marker test, which works really well. You take your magic marker and you're basically gonna run this along the edge like so. Okay, all the way up that knife. And this will come off, it's permanent marker, but it comes off real easily. Now I'm gonna put this in the sharpener and I'm gonna pull it across and we're gonna take a look and see what happened to that marker edge that we had. So I start by going in all the way and pulling it back just one time really lightly, it's all you need. Now here you can see the edge, and as you can see, all the marker has been removed. There's no marker at the very top, nor is there a marker at the very bottom, which means we nailed the degree at 20 degrees. Now, what if there was marker at the very top of this knife along that edge, and there was nothing on the bottom? That means that your degree has been set too steep. So if we would have seen that, 20 degrees would not have been the correct angle, it would have been too steep of an angle, or too wide of an angle. If there was marker that was showing just on the bottom and not the top, that means your degree of angle is too steep and you're at a narrow angle, which you need to basically widen it back out again. So you may have to experiment. Once you know what your knife is, I just keep a little journal, go ahead and write it down and you can keep the knife at that angle. Or you can re-edge the knife if you want and take that knife down. I've taken uh, many of my knives down from a 20 to a 17 degree angle, which I think is a great angle. Or I've taken some knives that are 17 down to 15, but Regardless of what you do, that is how you tell the edge. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the knife in and we're gonna do some passes. I usually start out, because this one's really dull, I'm gonna do 10 passes back and forth. So as I put it in, okay, this is gonna be one pass right there. That's one, two, three. Now, here's the thing. As I go back here, can you hear the change? Listen carefully. Lots of grinding going on. That's because this knife is really bad and the edges were rolled so bad, it's not even, that I've gotta go ahead and take this metal down to get back to normal. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep doing this till I get a burr, and getting a burr is very important. If you have a knife that's fairly sharp already, you're gonna really only hone the knife and strop it on the leather. You really don't have to sharpen this all the time. Matter of fact, I don't sharpen a knife every week. I probably sharpen it every couple of months. I hone it almost every couple of uses, and I love to strop it as well, uh, almost every couple of uses. So on this one, we're gonna move it right back and forth, and we wanna get a burr on the other side. Okay, so it's gonna take us a while. We'll speed up the film, and we'll check and make sure we get a burr. So now we're gonna check for a burr and see where we're at with this thing. We've taken a bunch of metal off it. And how you check a burr is you can take the knife from the opposite side you're sharpening, flip it up, Take your fingernail and run it up across that blade. If you feel like clicking type of uh, response or like you're going over a little bump, you have a burr. I don't have a burr yet. And that's because this knife was so bad. I've got to keep going on this thing and want to do that until we get the burr. And a lot of people ask, well, how do you know what speed to go? Do you go fast, do you go slow? There's really no magic number. Obviously, if a knife is really bad, I probably will go a lot slower across at an even pace. but if you go fast back and forth, it may just take a little bit longer to get there. And this knife guide works really well. It holds it right in place, right along that 600 grit wheel that's spinning. And I can actually see the dust coming up and attaching to the magnet. And I'm gonna show you this close up, it's really cool. So it looks like a bunch of fuzzy hair that's growing on the magnet. And it'll be time for a shave pretty soon. Now it took me a few minutes, but I actually have a burr on this side, which is causing my nail to click, and that's what we want. Now we have to turn over and do the other side. Typically, you wanna count the number of sides you did one side and do the other side evenly. In the case of something that's so badly damaged, I'm not really worrying about that. I just wanna get that burr. Once I get that burr, we're gonna go and take it off. And that's when I'm gonna go ahead and kind of start the counting process because we're now gonna have both sides getting to that apex that we want to get sharp. So we'll start alternating sides and make sure that everything's even. So I actually, in most cases, just turn around and do it this way, but you'll see a lot of people turning around like this, which is really easy to do, and that way they can keep the knife forward like this, 
There really is no preferred way to do it, I believe. I think it works well either way. This is awkward for me because I'm right hand dominant and I don't really like doing this with my left hand. So what I typically do is I angle it a little bit more like this and I stick it in this way and I like to go across like so. And I also look down and I can make sure the knife is actually up against that wheel evenly uh, because it's a little awkward when you do it the other way, at least in my other hand for me. So I think you're fine either way. So now we're gonna go back and forth and I can feel like this grinding going on because we have that burr. So this is actually taking the burr off, which happens pretty quickly. But then we wanna take this to sharpness. So I roll this back and forth until I feel no more roughness going across the blade. And we're almost there. Once it's there, I'll go ahead and give it 10 strokes. And that's where I'm gonna start with 10. And then we'll flip around, do 10, flip around, do five. And then we'll flip it around and do two. And then we'll flip around and do one. And that'll be it. It's a process, it's not difficult. It's the way that I've done it. You can do it a different way if you want, but I'm just showing you the way that it's been successful for me, working in the kitchen, you know, cutting meat, vegetables, various things, and making sure my knives are sharp all the time. So everything feels good, so we're gonna do 10. So we're at 10. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn around, we're gonna start our process and work our way down. So 10 on this side, 10 on the other side, and then we'll go down to five. So that's 10. Now we're gonna turn around and we're gonna go five. And you can see it's essentially the same way here. Just gonna go in and go all the way across. Three, five. We're gonna go back and we're gonna do five on this side. And I have to go slow this time because I know I'm getting a knife pretty sharp now. Five, we're gonna do three. That's three on that side, three on this side. And now we're gonna even it out and go one. And one. And now the next step is gonna be the honing process. Now looking at this knife, I can see that this side is nice and smooth. It looks pretty even, it's shiny. I don't see nicks or any divots in the steel. Turn this side over and I've got some problems. I can see there's some nicks here, very slight nicks on this side. And that's because we didn't work it as hard as the other side. So I'm gonna work this a little bit more because I wanna get these nicks down. I'm gonna show you this right now. There's a nick right there. Very obvious to me. There's also a little bit one up in the front. And if we look down this knife, we can see that one is the worst. Get that nick out of here. And it's gonna take some time. So we'll speed up the video and get to where that's gone. But we're gonna have to do the other side as well because we don't want it uneven. But I'm counting now because we're at four right now. And this is six and I'll do the same thing on the other side when we're done. This is seven. If we go to 20, we'll do 20. 15, I can still feel that nick, which is really interesting. As you pull across this really smooth diamond, you can feel it kind of catching that little nick. And so we're gonna keep doing that until that nick is gone. I think we're almost there, I can barely feel it, but I still hear a little bit of a click as I pass through it, so it's still there. So by feel and listening, you can really kind of hear a lot what's going on with your knife edge. It's a nice tactile feedback. There's still a little bit of a nick right in that area I showed you before. It's still there, it's not as pronounced, but it is still there. And so if I went across the paper test and this was sharpened and we got done with stropping, I would feel that as I went across kind of nicking and that would tell me there's a problem and I can go back and notice what was grabbing the paper, and that is why the paper test is valuable. Now you could just work on that one area. The problem is you wanna be careful because if you do that, uh, you could cause an indentation in the this, in this steel and an unevenness, almost like a warping, which you don't want. Uh, and this diamond is actually 600, so it's not really super aggressive, but it's also not really fine, so it does take off the steel. Now to clean this up, you could take a rag and just wipe it across it, or you can wash it and pop it out. This does come out and I'm gonna go ahead and show you how simple it is. You just basically lift this and this thing is covered in metal shavings. So some people take it to the sink. I just take it and put it in a rag, rub it off. But of course, if you just rub it and leave everything there, the metal shavings are gonna be right on the magnet. So I usually wipe it down really well like this. I grab one end and I squeeze and I roll this to get everything off and I squeeze again. And that usually takes off most of the metal shavings and you have a nice new shiny magnet. So we'll go ahead and put that in here. 
Make sure we get everything off, all the residue. And then we'll go and put this back in. It doesn't have to be perfect either. I mean, it's you know good enough uh, just to get all the big bulky stuff off. Basically, fits in this little area here. You just slide it in like so. You heard it snap in, it pops in, you're ready to go again. Now, there is a little hole on the bottom here, but as you can see here, there is a little alignment guide that sticks out to make sure this goes on evenly. So you have to make sure that when you slide this on, you put that component on the bottom, like so, and that way you're back in action. It's very easy. You can also move this back and forth depending on the knife you have, how large it is. You may want to adjust this a little bit for the, for the blade where it's going to position. This one happens to be just right even with the actual wheel. So we're going to go ahead and continue and get this a final couple passes. When you look down on this, what's great is that if this knife was really bad, which it was early on, I could see light between the knife blade and the diamond uh, wheel. And that's because it's horrible. But as you keep working this back and forth, that will even out and that light should disappear. So as I'm looking down right now, I'm really not seeing any detectable light anymore. It's much smoother. And we can tell that I think we've pretty much gotten this nick out at this point. We'll go one more time past here, slowly, and make sure there's no nick. I really don't feel anything this time, so let's take it out and take a look and see what our nick looks like. Be very careful when you're wiping these blades down. You don't want to cut yourself. And now, success. Everything looks beautiful. Nice, shiny edge. That nick that was here is totally gone. And we're gonna go ahead and pass this through a couple times because we did this side now, remember? So we wanna make sure we even it out. So we're gonna go just a few times across here. And we should be good to go. And again, you'll get this with practice. It'll just become kind of second nature. You'll feel what to do. Now, the key thing is we wanna put this on the honing wheel. The honing actually takes off any micro abrasions. We're gonna polish the edge and that will get it as sharp as it can get with the T1. Then we'll go ahead and do a leather strop, which I always do after I sharpen my knives, and then we'll go ahead and test it on the best tester. The leather strop takes this edge and puts a really nice polish on it. A lot of people will use uh, diamond paste, they'll use a uh, compound, they'll use gunny, uh, gunny juice, uh, things like that, which work great. And for keeping it simple, I'm just gonna show you how to use the leather strop. Basically, this is a calf leather, and I do have a buffalo leather that I like. I've got several strops, and on those strops, you can put multiple compounds or multiple grits of, say, gunny juice with you know, five micron, one micron, you know, half a micron, uh, and really go crazy with this thing. Uh, a lot of guys that are in knives want those things mirror polished, and you can do that, but doing this process, you're not gonna get a mirror polish, but you don't need it, because we're gonna get this thing wicked sharp, and that's all you need in the kitchen. Now, this wheel is spinning away, this way. You don't wanna put the knife down with the blade towards you, because it's gonna grab that blade, and it's gonna flick the knife, or it's gonna nick this wheel and cause damage and is dangerous. So you gotta make sure that whenever this is on, you're paying attention that it's going away from you. Now there's two ways you could do this. I see some people holding it down low like this, and they go across like so, which you can't really see with the camera, but they'll do it like this. I like to do it this way, which is up on the higher side, because I like to make sure that the angle that I'm at is the proper angle. And by doing it this way, I can actually see that I'm at the proper angle with this blade, and I can also feel better for myself running it across like so, that that is going across the edge evenly. If I do it this way, which, which works fine, you'll see a lot of people doing this, it's kind of hard for me sometimes to gauge if I'm moving the knife at all and I wanna get that angle. So for me, I found that this way works really well. It's also safe because this wheel is absolutely going down, which is great, so I know I'm going down across this blade like so. So I just basically put it on here, I'm at a 20 degree angle, I'm gonna move it across like so. You don't need a lot of pressure at all, just enough to keep it on the wheel. And we're gonna go back and forth a couple times. I'm gonna turn it over and do the same thing on the other side, like so. And go across this way again. And now we've basically honed this edge. And that's not only taken off all the micro abrasions, on there, but it will polish that edge 
and refine it even further. And then what we'll do next is we'll shut off the T1 and we'll go to the leather strop. Now, the leather strop is really simple. You're basically gonna wanna put your knife at the same angle, 20 degrees. You're gonna wanna run it across the leather. You're not gonna wanna press hard. You wanna be soft on that leather. And what we're doing is we're basically gonna polish that edge and refine it as best as we can. So I like to keep mine at an angle like this. You're gonna put down, I start at the tip and I run it across the leather. And how you know you're at the proper angle is you can bring this knife back a little bit and start tilting it up. And when it catches, you just back off a little bit because that's your 20 degrees. Now, in the case of 20 and 15, I've got muscle memory. I kind of can tell where it is real quick by placing my fingers down on here and how the blade fits on the leather. And again, these are all things you learn over time and practice. It becomes kind of second nature. So we'll take this across and we're gonna give it some strop. We're gonna go across this maybe about 10 times. So when I hone, I like to lock my arms in place when I have the angle and I just like to pivot my at the waist to go across like so. So this isn't moving, this isn't moving, everything stays where it needs to be. Again, you can bring it up until it grabs right there. And I know that backing down a little bit is my 20 degrees and we're just gonna run it across. Again, just slight pressure to hold it on the leather. We're not gonna go ahead and push down hard, it's not needed. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do this. So I did 10, I'm gonna go and do five on this one. And people ask, can you do it straight across? Can you go at an edge? A lot of people have said if you've sharpened with something straight across, you should go straight across. Other people say you should, you should take it at an angle and move it across. I really found it hasn't made a huge difference as long as you're stropping that correctly across that leather. And uh, you, know, you wanna move it across, straight across like this. It will probably make a difference from professionals out there that will say it does. I'm not a professional, so I really can't comment at that level in depth. But for kitchen knife sharpening, which this video is designed for, for you in the kitchen and using your various uh, knives, this works perfectly fine and you're gonna get wicked sharp and you've done a good job. So we can also go across like this. I tend to start at the tip. And we'll go to this side. I'm gonna do three. I'll do one. And now our knife is done. So to check our knife to see if it's sharp or not, you can do the paper test and see if it cuts through and if it's smooth. Now it's not gonna tell you if it's a, a 200, a 150. It's gonna tell you that it's sharp enough to cut through paper. And it's gonna tell you if there's any roughness. So we'll go ahead and try this down through like so. Cut like butter. And we'll go ahead and try it again. And I'll go even slower on this here to show you. And I'm running this down really slow. Super smooth. I have no perceivable shakiness or roughness going on. And that means that it's really well. If you see people, you know, they do this, they'll, they'll look, you know, really fast. You know, it's kind of like golf, right? You drive for show and you putt for dough. I think that's driving for show. I think this is putting for dough. Now, let's go ahead and get our tester. Now we're gonna go ahead and zero this out and we're gonna go ahead and do our test. Again, I wanna test in the same area just for reference. So there's a logo here. I'm testing just a little bit on this side, the left side of the logo, which aligns with the test media. And we have it in our fulcrum. And then we're gonna go ahead and press slowly down until it breaks. Again, you'll see people after a test doing this real quick and you know, run it across, look how sharp it is. They're totally fudging the test. Um, they're making things look sharper than they are. Um, I can take a, a knife that's actually quite a bit duller and I can run it across. Because remember, this is measuring the gram pressure. If you're going across like so, you're not really adding pressure. You're just slicing across the media to cut it. So you're defeating the purpose. When you do the test properly, there should be no movement across that media except for downward pressure to let that blade cut through the media in a uh, vertical position. So here we go. Make sure we're lined up correctly and we'll press down now. Barely touched it, started it. Folks, we're at 182, okay? So 900 to 182. Remember, factory sharpness, 300 to 350. So if we go to 182, we're at a utility razor blade. 
utility razor blade. You can cut anything in your kitchen with the utility razor blade. So final comments on the Torma T1. Absolutely, I think, one of the most incredible sharpeners on the market. The price for the T1 that I've seen is absolutely incredible. It's actually, it's kind of funny, it's actually a lot cheaper than a lot of the manual sharpeners. You'll see the paddle sharpeners. I mean, some of those are, are four, five, six hundred dollars. This is well below that, if you can believe that, and it is. Tormex done a great job with their pricing. The, this has a eight year warranty. You register your Tormex, you get eight years on it. And this is gonna be always my go-to that sits in the kitchen all the time and is used to sharpen my knives. I hope you enjoy this video. Make sure you like and subscribe. This is the Ukulele Barbecue Test Kitchen. I do all my cooking and my testing right here in the kitchen. And I hope you stay and watch the next one. Thanks a lot. We'll see you soon. Smoke on, baby.